Hi, so to you all viewers of Equinox Television. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the news with me, Anna Bilaliku. Right away, we begin with our major stories, shock and consternation in the noon division of the West region as six members of the same family all died. They include a father and his five children. They all died after consuming a substance which turned out to be poisonous. We will be telling you more in this edition of the news. Plus, at what stage is the Matt Nelsogo murder case after prime suspects Jean-Pierre Amogu Belinga and Co. have been sent to the Kondegi Maximum Prison, a legal mind simplifies that for us in this newscast, so stay with us. Welcome back viewers, we thank you so much for always according us your time every evening for the news in the English language. We just told you the headlines that five children belonging to the same family, uh, the children and their father have all died after consuming a concoction in Kwoptamo. Kwoptamo is a, sub a subdivision in the noon division of the West region. The person who gave um, the medicine or the substance uh, to the head of that family has also been arrested by security forces. Forces. Martin Dikan Gabriel comes back to that sad new settlement. Shock and consternation creeps the people of Bitwen 2 in Kuptamu subdivision in Nun, west region of Cameroon. On the bed lies the lifeless bodies of five kids with ages ranging between three months to nine years and their father, Fifen Useni who is in his late 60s. All of them died after consuming a concussion that their father brought home to prevent them from having certain illnesses. My husband returned home with some drugs, saying that it was Alhaji Kolos who gave him for the kids not to be sick. My daughter was the one who ground the medicine, after which we mixed it with red oil before all of them took it except me, because I was going to be. After the woman finished bathing, she saw something else in her household. After I finished bathing, I noticed that everyone was weak, and I refused taking the medicine. According to an elderly man we met at between two quarter. He believes it was a wrong medicine that was given to the man who died. The person who gave the drugs wasn't a specialist. I think he was only helping his friend because the medicine he gave to his friend wasn't to kill him. It seems he made a mistake in the drugs he gave to his friend. <laughs> Only investigations will prove what actually happened with the five kids and the father. Going with their Muslim tradition, all bodies were buried over the weekend while the man who gave the drugs has been arrested by gendarmes for further interrogations. And now insecurity has been on the rise in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé. Several persons within a month have been brutally killed by people who are still on the run. Innocent as and now talk us more about the rising insecurity in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé. As the presence of police stations and gendarmerie brigades in locality in the 10 regions of Cameroon, insecurity still rises alarmingly with people murdered on a daily basis. Shockingly, most of these killings happen in the capital city, Yaoundé. Many thought would be the safest of all the regional cities. The assassination of journalist Martinez Zogo in Ebogo in January after being kidnapped in front of a gendarmerie brigade still shocks and remains a misery to many. While the population focused on condemning the gruesome murder of the media guru demanding for justice to be served, Unidentified assassins, 17 days after, attacked and assassinated on Thursday night, February 2nd, Reverend Father Jean-Jacques Ola Bebe in Yaoundé. 
The body of this priest of the Orthodox Church was found in the Mimbo Man, a Mumbo neighborhood around 10 p.m. not far from his home. Not as mutilated as Martinez Zogo, the journalist priest was quickly recognized by his family and journalists. Reverend Father Jean Jacques Ola Bebe led a road crusade against the social injustice and the looting of state financial resources. On March 1, Reverend Father Olivier Ta Ebode was murdered in disturbing circumstances. His assassins reportedly dumped his body somewhere in the town of Obala before taken to their heels. Another heart piercing murder case was that of Marie Florence Quadif, a Cameroonian nurse working in Paris, France. She was murdered Monday night, February 20, in Yaoundé, around the highway leading to the Simalen International Airport. Her body showed evidence of physical violence, including several stab wounds. Her car in which she was driving was taken away by her killers. On Friday, March 3rd, 2023, at about 1 p.m., the lifeless body of a man wrapped in a bag was discovered in Komkana, Yaoundé. For close to two months now, city dwellers in Yaoundé have been living in fear because of numerous cases of murder. Faced by these ugly killings, which are becoming a new normal in neighborhoods, many people keep pressurizing the forces of law and order to watch over the population, especially those in Yaoundé, better. Hopefully something is done to protect the population better, not only in Yaoundé, but across the national territory. And now several internally displaced persons from the northwest and the southwest regions living in the west region and the littoral respectively decry their deplorable living conditions. Many of the victims say they are now unable to attend uh, to the needs of their family members. They are urging the government to put an end to the crisis in the northwest and the southwest so they could return to their homes. Immaculate Fogwe tells us more about the challenges faced by some of the victims of the war in the northwest and the southwest regions. Since the escalation of the armed conflict in Anglophone Cameroon, characterized by violence, abductions, sexual violence and imposed lockdowns, many families were forced to move to other regions where there is relative calm. However, these affected families are encountering lots of challenges in their new locations. Majority of the displaced who are women and children have become vulnerable due to their poor living conditions. I left Bamenda two years ago and I am now living in Melong. I am facing challenges paying my rent, providing food for my family, and equally sending my children to school. Due to numerous ghost towns, I was unable to go about my regular activities while in Bamenda. My kids were equally unable to go to school. Having a house here is a major problem. I left Kambe for Melon. Feeding my family is extremely hard for me. Just like these two victims, many other families are facing the same problems. To address their plights, some of the IDPs were trained to basic skills that will enable them to become financially autonomous. Thanks to this training, I'll be able to feed my family with the money gotten from the job. My children will equally be able to go to school. The living conditions of most of these IDPs is deplorable, so we thought it necessary to teach them some basic skills that will enable them to become financially autonomous. In the course of a seminar that grouped internally displaced persons from the northwest and southwest regions now living in the littoral and west regions, the victims were sensitized on how to better face the adversities. They are urging the Cameroonian government to better assist the victims and also put in place measures that will put an end to the over six-year-old armed conflict. 
And now, after some prime suspects of the Martinez Azogu murder case were sent to the Kondengi Maximum Prison, the international, international press has been taking interest in that verdict published in French, English, and Spanish international news organs didn't keep calm on the indictment of suspects of the Martinez Azogu murder case. Focusing more on Jean Pierre Amogu Beringa, Global News sites say they have been charged for complicity in torture. For me, I'm from Sander completes a story for us. The international press got to work immediately after the accused were charged and sent to the Kondengi Maximum Security Prison on a pre-trial detention in Yaoundé. China Global Television Network America says an influential businessman in Cameroon, Jean-Pierre Amugu Belinga, was charged such day with complicity in torture suspected of being involved in the murder of Martinez Zogo, a journalist kidnapped and killed after being tortured on January 22nd, according to his lawyer. In French, Afrique.com says Jean-Pierre Amugu Belinga begins his stay in prison on the Martinez Zogo assassination case. Influential French newspaper Le Monde says an influential businessman accused of being involved in the assassination of journalist Martinez Zogo has been charged with complicity in torture. Le Monde in its lead-in went further to say that late Martinez Zogo regularly accused Jean-Pierre Amugu Belinga in his radio program Ambotiash in Yaoundé. On its part, Jeune Afrique reported that Justin Dawe, Amogu Belinga and Maxim Eko Eko have been charged in connection with the assassination of Martinez Zogo. Jeune Afrique goes further to precise that the trio were charged on such day, 4th March 2023, for having played a role or more in the kidnapping and killing of Martinez Zogo. Jeune Afrique further reported that Bruno Bijang and Eton Dinswe on their part were released on bail. The new twist on the Martinez Zogo affair also featured on Radio France International RFE, Spanish news organ La Nation, LSI Africa, Force International and TV Saint Monde. And now in our quest to know more about what is going to happen next in the case of the assassination of journalist Martin Sogo, we spoke with a legal mind, Barristan Kamwa Limen. He explains the job of the examining magistrate and the option he has in the decision that will determine the fate of the defendants. Babila Jonathan completes the story. The Martinez Zogo assassination affair is now in the hands of the examining magistrate. His job is the result of the 2005 revision of the Cameroon Penal Code. He has a duty to, to carry on more investigation on matters that are presented to him. And it is mandatory when it is, an, or it, when it is a felony, the person is charged to have committed an offense classified as felony. So in the case at hand, it is very, very it's imperative, it's mandatory that the defendants are brought in front of the examining magistrate. To reduce the error margin of court proceedings to near zero, the examining magistrate reviews proofs submitted to him by judicial police investigators. There are proofs already that they committed the offence, but those proofs have, they have to be re-examined by the examining magistrate so as to limit the number of errors that will be committed in the courts. You see, the crimes are usually heavily punished from 10 years and above life and death sentence. And so it is, it is normal that uh, when persons have to be tried for crimes, they go through this pre-trial. It's like a pre-trial. You see, a mini-trial. This is done at the convenience of the examining magistrate within a time frame defined by the law. The defendants will appear before him at this convenient time. But he has six months uh, renewable tries. That's he has a total of 18 months. Within which he must conclude. He must conclude his uh, preliminary inquiries. The decision of the examining magistrate determines the course of the case. If at the end of the day he feels that there are sufficient evidence, proofs that the person committed the offence, he sends it back to the state council and he goes now to court. And there again, the the the, the, the state is changed to to accuse persons. If he feels that 
<laughs> they were they were not the bill granted to them was was they are implicated you bring them back and those who might equally find that some persons uh, who were already um, charged might not have may, may, might have partially or not be part of the this and then he frees them about the charges against the defendants Barristan Kamwa Limen explains that as stated in Article 97 of the Penal Code of Cameroon, accomplices and those found guilty of having committed the crime are punished equally. Mm -hmm. And now we talk something else. In about two days, women in Cameroon will be turning out as the world over to observe the International Women's Day in prelude to the event. Some uh, women in the southwest region, precisely in Tomber and Bangem, have been trained on how to earn a living with new technology. This might come as a means to curb the numerous challenges faced by those in Tomber and, and Bangem. Lucy Liengu is here, completes the story for us. Youths of Kupe Mwanenguba Division, predominantly females, say since the start of the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, they have been facing difficulties. Most of them who are specialized in livestock and agriculture complain they are still struggling to regain their activities. To solve this problem, the youths of Tombel and Kupe Manenguba in general during a seminar have been educated on how they can market their goods through social networks. The objective of this program is to give the youth of Tombel hard skills, hard digital skills that they can use to create jobs for themselves, that they can use to employ themselves online. The goal is to enable them to uh, sell internationally. The market today is international. Today people from different countries buy from people in other countries. So they can use social media to, to generate revenue. They can use social media to make money. You have a, a farm of plantain and you want to sell. And now you have to snap that plantain or use your phone to sell that plantain, even in Yaoundé. In Yaoundé, they buy in Douala, they buy anywhere, if and only if you have posted it and you have customers, they'll start asking you, especially when you have posted and your number is under. The youths of Tombe wish the training will reduce the high rates of unemployment and help them to be economically empowered. Coming back to insecurity in Cameroon, administrative authorities in some parts of the Anglophone regions of the country have expressed worries on rising security threats, like the recent mountain race explosion in Boya, in Kambe subdivision in the Donga Mantung division of the northwest region has been witnessing sustained separatist threats in most of its villages, a major preoccupation to the administrators. For me, I'm from Sanda, is among that bit. Brutal assassination of a teacher of government school Njab after the 11 February activity is one of the examples of the security threats that have been increasing in the subdivision. We were able to identify these threats, come up with a common strategy. Apart from that, administrators say cattle theft, robbery and threatening messages have been coming from separatists of late. Hence, the necessity to reinforce vigilance in the 17 villages making up the subdivision. Talking about vigilance, I will not want to attribute that to groups. Because our tradition here is that so long as you are part and parcel of this subdivision, vigilance is your utmost responsibility. Though we have also constituted ourselves in some groups to watch out for our different villages, to watch out for our different quarters, and to watch out for our entire subdivision. To tackle that, the divisional officer for Kambe presided over an enlarged administrative coordination and security meeting which saw the participation of defense and security forces, subdivisional delegates and service herds, principals of colleges, herd teachers, traditional authorities, force and outdoors, religious administrators, leaders of civil society organizations, vigilante group members and more. The common problems we have is uh, that of logistics, some work of material to do their work. We, in the course of this meeting, we also resolved that we are going to make it our collective responsibility. Proof, in the course of the meeting, 
so many contributions came up from individuals to assist the group. Even now, the division officer, I have to assist them with so many touches. After key deliberations, it was resolved that all delegates and persons heading administrative services of the subdivision must endeavor to make the said administration very user-friendly, bring it closer to the people, and more performant than in 2022. On a security plan, participants unanimously agreed to step up vigilance more than ever before traditional authorities on their part resolved to maintain collaboration with the administration, defense and security forces to keep their respective villages calm and serene. And now we take you out of, of Cameroon. France's President Emmanuel Macron ended his tour of Central Africa in a diplomatic drive to test a new relationship with the continent as anti-French sentiment runs high in some former colonies. He landed in Gabon, Angola, Congo, Brazzaville, and the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, where he had talks with the country's president. Details with Mala Glory. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, arrived the Democratic Republic of Congo in the grip of a rebellion in its eastern part, warning it must not become the spoil of war. Macron announced that France will release an immediate contribution of 34 million euros in humanitarian aid to cover the immediate needs of the local population in terms of food, health care and sanitation. The air bridge will link with Ngoma, the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, eastern North Kivu province, where fighting with the rebel group M23 has displaced more than 600 people. France has previously joined the United Nations, Congo and other countries in accusing Rwanda of supporting the M23, but Macron was asked during a news conference in Kinshasa to condemn Rwanda. Libreville, Rwanda, Brazzaville, Kinshasa. French President Emmanuel Macron ends his tour of Africa as he tries to shift French policy on the continent away from military involvement. This is his 18th presidential trip to Africa. It comes at a time of ever-increasing competition from China, Russia and other growing resentment of the close economic ties between France and its former colonies which some sees it as a continued exploitation. Macron also aims at reorienting French support to focus more on training and technical backup for African armed forces. Meantime, there have been an anti-French demonstration in the Democratic Republic of Congo ahead of his visit. Furthermore, opponents of Gabon's president, Ali Bongo Odimba, and Democratic Republic of Congo's President Felix Tshisekedi have been complaining that Macron's visit could be rendered as interference to bolster the image of these incumbent rulers in what is an election year for both 